I will make special dua for them. Uh, Dr. Nabila, who's one of our main doctors of the Epic Clinic, her father passed away. And uh, three brothers of our community, Brother Asif, Adil, and, and uh, Yasir, their father, uh, Sajjad, he has passed away. So we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive those that have passed on, to bless them, to make their graves a vast place of Jannah, to forgive their sins, to exalt their ranks, and to give sabr to the families. We also have a special request. Uh, we have uh, in our ranks Brother Muhsin and Nisar, very active in, the, uh, in our epic uh, volunteers. Him and his entire family are suffering from COVID. So we ask Allah for a speedy and a complete recovery. On top of this, the uh, Jumu'ah khutbah schedule has been modified slightly now that the school season is in. Uh, so we will be having a third khutbah, especially for our teenagers and our youth who are not able to attend because they're going to be in school. So we're going to be having a third khutbah at 4.30 p.m. So this khutbah is intended for the youth, and in case one of you is not able to attend the earlier two, so 4.30 p.m. for this entire uh, semester duration, inshallah ta'ala, it will be particularly for those in high school or those in college who are not able to attend the earlier two. And as usual, we have a strict mask policy. All of you are requested to maintain your masks and make sure they're over your nose and your mouth for the entire duration of the khutbah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu <clears throat> alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Ashhadu an Muhammad Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya ala salah Hayya ala I can ask all the brothers to move forward. We don't want people sitting in the back. So if you have any space, inshallah, please pack yourselves to the front as much as possible. Alhamdulillah. All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created everything in pairs. He is the Rabb of the world and the master of all of our affairs. He demonstrated his power through the perfection of creation and he manifested his knowledge through the reality of predestination. He created death and life as a trial for us all and a test and to separate the pious from the wicked and to select the best. So tabarak Allah, the one to whom belongs all power and majesty and may salat and salam be upon Muhammad the Makki and the Hashimi. As to what follows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us to be conscious of him when he says in the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Dear Muslims, 
of the greatest blessings and gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to all of mankind, the Muslim of them and the non-Muslim of them, of the greatest blessings is that of family. And insha'Allah ta'ala today and a series of future khutbas, we will be talking about the family and the blessings of the family and how to have a blessed family in light of the Quran and of the Sunnah. So today will be the first in a series of khutbas about this topic. And today, insha'Allah ta'ala, in particular, we will begin with the blessings of the spouse. Now, much has been spoken about when it comes to the rights of the spouse, the huquq al zawjain But I hope, insha'Allah ta'ala, in this series, to go beyond just the legal and the technical terminologies, and to think of the spirit of marriage, and to think about how the Qur'an and the Sunnah and our human experiences tell us to live a better life. And let us begin from the very beginning. Let us begin from the story of the beginning of the creation. Because even in that story, there are lessons for marriage. How beautiful is it, dear Muslims, that when Allah created the first human being, He didn't leave him single. When Allah created our father Adam, as soon as our father Adam was created, from Adam, our father was blessed with a spouse. And our mother Hawa was gifted to Adam even before the two of them were told to enter Jannah. Even before Allah told Adam to enter Jannah, Allah had created a spouse for Adam. Then Allah said, Ya Adam, uskun anta wa zawjuka al Jannah. Oh Adam, you and your wife, the two of you, live together in Jannah. It is as if even Jannah is not Jannah without your other half. The two of you together live in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us in the creation story that our spouses are from us and within us. Allah azza wa jal did not create the creation from anew. Adam was created from anew. Adam was created from clay. Hawa could have been created from clay. Hawa could have been fashioned as well, but to demonstrate the fact that men and women, ba'dukum min ba'd, as the Quran says, to demonstrate that the man is from the woman and the woman is from the man. Because if Allah had wanted to, He could have fashioned Hawa like He fashioned Adam. But no, to demonstrate that the two of them are from and to each other. Allah created Hawa from Adam. وَجَعَلَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And from him He created the spouse. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran as well that Hawa and Adam lived in Jannah for a period of time. Then what happened happened and the two of them came down to this earth together. The both of you come down together. So subhanallah brothers and sisters, think about this story which is the first marriage in all of the creation because it is the marriage of our mother and our father Adam and Hawa. Think about their lives. We do not have stories of their time on earth. But I want you, after the khutbah is over, when you're alone by yourself, I want you to imagine and visualize two human beings with no companionship other themselves. Without knowing any aspect of technology, not having even the knowledge of how to light a fire, not having knowledge of how to harvest seeds and plants. Think of those two human beings. Once upon a time, they were in Jannah, eating and drinking and enjoying Jannah. Then instantaneously, they are on this earth, struggling and toiling. They don't even know how to build a shelter. They don't even have anything other than the clothes Allah Azza wa sent them down upon. But you see, Allah knew that the two of them would be on earth. So it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the difficult times ahead that the two of them had each other. They had no other human being. They had no knowledge of how to live on this earth. They were the first human beings. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them for each other. Can you imagine the difficult times they would have lived in? Can you imagine every single day and hour struggling where to eat, how to survive after having been in Jannah? But Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to show mercy to our father Adam. He didn't leave him alone. And that story of the very first marriage, it is as if it is a microcosm of all marriages. It is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us divine wisdom. They were created together. They worshipped Allah in Jannah. 
agenda together. They brought down on earth together. They repented together. They lived the most beautiful days together. And they lived the most difficult days together. It is as if Allah is saying, through the thick and through the thin, through the, through the difficult and through the easy, through the ups and through the downs, it is the spouses that comfort one another. This is the wisdom. This is the goal of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us in pairs. We all understand that if Allah had wanted to, we wouldn't be in these pairs. We all understand that this is of the divine gifts that the Quran explicitly mentions multiple times. The Quran asks us to think about the fact that He created us in male and female. <laughs> he created you in two zawjain, in two pairs, the male and the female. This is of the ayat of Allah, of the miracles of Allah. In Surah al rum the verse that is recited in every single marriage khutbah, every time somebody gets married, the khatib recites this verse because it is related to marriage. But it is a verse that allows us to think and to reflect. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ And of the signs of Allah, of the miracles of Allah. Allah calls marriage of His miracles. Think about that. Do you know what an ayah is? Allah calls the Qur'an an ayah. Allah calls the, 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 the camel that was sent to the people of Salih an ayah. This is a miracle. When you look at it, you are astounded at the magnificence of Allah. That's an ayah. To look at an ayah is astonishing. An ayah demonstrates the power of Allah, the mercy of Allah, the qudra of Allah. That's what an ayah is. And Allah says, and of his ayat is the miracle of marriage. Think about that. Think about that. We take it for granted because obviously we all are in a world of marriages. We're born from a marriage. We are married. This is how we live. But Allah is saying, just like the sun, just like the moon, don't take it for granted. These are ayat. So too, marriage is an ayah. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ Of his miraculous signs is that he created for you. Allah doesn't benefit if we're in two genders or one. Doesn't matter to Allah. But Allah wanted to benefit us. Allah wanted to make things easy for us. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ It is a gift to you. This is for us that Allah created us in male and female. Allah created us husbands and wives. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ It's a gift to you to make things easy for you. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ From you. And we have spoke about this before. From you. We are not alien species. Hawa was not created separate. No, created for you, from you. Created for you, from you. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ And of course, the reality here is to demonstrate as the Quran says, بَعْضُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْض The both of you are from the both of you. Men are from men and women, and women are from men and women. We are not alien species. We are the same, and yet we are complementary. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَ The term zawj, by the way, it literally means pair. In the Arabic language, the term zawj, it means pair. It is as if the two are meant to be together. You talk about a pair of shoes, you talk about a pair of something. Literally, it's as if the husband and wife were intended to be together. That's what what zawj means. So Allah says, خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا Then He tells us why. What is the wisdom? لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The word second in the Arabic language, primarily the first thing that comes to mind of our Arab brothers is a house. Second is a house. And Allah uses the term here for marriage. Because your marriage is your house. Your marriage is your house. If you build your marriage, you have built your house. And if you have destroyed your marriage, you have destroyed your house. The term second literally means the house that you live in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا The same root from building a house is used for a marriage. Because this is the essence of marriage. Far more important than your physical second. Far more important than the building and the mortar and the bricks of your house is the love inside the house. You can have a house built on marriage of love, even if you don't have a physical house. Adam and Hawa did not have a house for Allah knows how long. They didn't even know how to build a house. Adam and Hawa did not have a house, but they had a second of marriage. 
Yet there are those who have magnificent palaces, but they do not have second inside. They do not have households built upon love and upon marriage. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Also, one of the meanings of second as well, and sukun as we're all aware of, is sakina, tranquility. One of the meanings of second is peace. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So ponder over this point here, brothers and sisters. We are being told it is as if the world is a very difficult place. It is as if the world is full of problems, stress, grief, anxiety. And then we have a spouse. And in that spouse, we will find comfort. We will find peace. We will find tranquility. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا the world gives you a lot of problems, but when you have a loving spouse, when you have a spouse that cares about you and you care about him or her, when your marriage is solid, then insha'Allah ta'ala, the problems of this world are manageable. But when your second is being destroyed, when your marriage is crumbling, when you don't have happiness inside the house, then as we all know, all of the happiness outside the house will not make you happy. That's what Allah is saying. إِلَيْهَا Your real sakina will be found in your spouse. The real happiness is the happiness of marriage and family. If you have a blessed family, a blessed marriage, then inshallah, finances, everything else, they come and go, but you will live a good life. But if you have all the money in the world, but your marriage is crumbling, your children are not happy with you, well then of what use is all of that? This is what Allah is saying, of the wisdoms of marriage, of the wisdoms of having a spouse, لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا to find comfort, to find happiness, to find peace and tranquility within your spouse. And this is something you need to find, you need to put in the effort. It does, it's not already there, you have to work on your marriages. And inshallah in the future khutbas, we'll be talking a little bit about how to work on those marriages. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا And then Allah Azza wa Jal says something amazing. We've heard this verse all the time, brothers and sisters. But look at this nuqta, look at this interesting point here. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And He has placed between you love and tenderness. Notice here, Allah ascribes love to Himself. And Allah says, He is the one that has blessed you to have that love. Literally, Allah takes ownership of the love of the marriage. And Allah says, I am the one that has made that love in your hearts. Notice, this is the sharaf. This is the dignity that Allah gives to that love. This is not a love to be embarrassed about. This is not a love to hide. This love is a divine gift from Allah. This love is a divine blessing that Allah puts in the Quran. Allah has placed love between you and Allah has placed tenderness. Mawadda and Rahma. Mawadda is a, 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 a love that is overpowering. And Rahma, as we know, is tenderness and mercy. The both are in the spouse. The both both are in the good spouse, the righteous spouse, and that blessing is ascribed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know this emotion of love. Wallahi, the world knows this emotion of love. Of what? Of what, what is the goal of poetry except love? What is the goal of all of these movies except this love? What is the goal of all of these romance novels except love? That feeling of love is something that all of us cherish. All of us, we understand it. And Allah says, when it occurs within a marriage, it is my gift to you. It is my gift unto you. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً Brothers and sisters, a gift that is from Allah. Should we not cherish it? Should we not protect it? Should we not work to sustain it? Allah is saying, this is my gift to you. Well then what does that mean to us? It means we need to thank Allah for it. We need to cherish and make sure that that gift is not taken away. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً SubhanAllah, we are all see this reality. As I said, it's a human reality. That's why the poets write their poetry and the script writers wrote the, write their movies. We all know this reality, that powerful feeling of love. Two strangers come together. They have not been raised together. They are not biologically related. And yet their love is the most powerful love, the most tender love. It is that love that is the love that everybody knows and cherishes. And Allah says, you know that miracle? I gave it unto you. Only when it occurs within a marriage, the way that it should, it is a gift from Allah. If it is existing outside, it is not that type of gift. This is the gift between husband and wife. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ Allah begins, that of His many miracles is the miracle of marriage. Then Allah says, in this are many ayat, not just one. In the miracle of marriage are many miracles. Allah Azza wa Jal makes marriage not just one, 
إن في ذلك لآيات. In this are many signs. لقوم يتفكرون. To those who think, to those who ponder. The more you think about the miracle of husband and wife, the more you think about the miracle of family, the more you will appreciate the blessings that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has given unto us. Now, of course, brothers and sisters, with this blessing comes responsibility. And this is where, inshallah ta'ala, I'll be giving future khutbahs about this reality of responsibility. But today I wanted to just open up the topic to mention this beautiful institution known as marriage and to underscore that it is a divine gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. Now, as I said, brothers and sisters, many khutbahs and durus, they concentrate on the technical and the legal aspects of the rights of the husband and the rights of the wife. And that has a role, it has a place. We must be educated about the huquq of the zawj and the zawjah. And inshallah ta'ala, there's plenty online to tell you about the legal and fiqh issues. But I want to mention one point, dear brothers and sisters, especially dear husbands. No marriage is going to flourish if you are interested in the bare minimal legal rights that is due to the other. No marriage is going to flourish if you're looking at the technical definitions of the law. A marriage is based upon sacrifice and love and not based upon the minimalistic expectations. The books of fiqh are not what you turn to to how to have a happy marriage. That is when there's difficulties. What is the technical issues? Yes, that's legal stuff. It should be done. But to have a happy marriage, you need to move beyond the minimal requirements. You need to move beyond the huquq and to ask yourselves, what can I do to make this marriage flourish? And as I said, inshallah ta'ala, we'll be talking about this in our future khutbas and topics. But I wanted to just mention one point before we move on in future khutbas. One point, and that is, dear brothers and sisters, and now I'm addressing those of you that have been married for 5, 10, 15, 20, 50 years. I'm addressing those of you that have been married for a number of years, and you understand that marriage has its ups and downs. You understand that marriage does have its sweet points, but yes, it also has its negatives as well. I speak to you, especially those of you that are struggling, those of you that might not be in the types of marriages you think were what you in Imagine when you were young and single. I'm speaking to all of you and I say every single marriage, every single marriage, insha'Allah ta'ala, if the two parties are sincere, it can be salvaged and saved. This is of the biggest blessings that Allah has promised us in the Quran. Our scholars mention the most optimistic verse when it comes to marriage in the Quran is the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah when Allah says, in Yurida Islahan, you have Fikilahu Bainahuma, Surah Nisa. In Yurida Islahan, you have Fikilahu Bainahuma. If the two of them want to make peace, husband and wife, if the two of them want to make things work, Allah will bring about reconciliation between them. This is not just cheap slogans, Audu Billah. This is a divine promise, dear husband and dear wife. It is a divine promise to all of you. Allah has made a hard and fast rule. And when Allah makes a rule, there are no exceptions. Allah Azza wa Jal has said, in yurida islahan, if the husband and wife want to make things work, yuwaffiqillahu baynahuma, Allah will bring about tawfiq between them. All that is required is sincerity. That's it. That's it. You come to the table with a sincere heart. I want to make our marriage work. But there has to be one other condition. The other side also has to come with that condition. If the both of you have that condition, if the both of you come and you say, you know what, we're having problems. We all couples have problems, but I want to make this marriage work. And the other spouse says the same thing. Then good news, glad tidings, Bashara. Allah has guaranteed that your marriage is going to flourish. And subhanAllah, there's other optimistic verses about marriage as well, brothers and sisters. We must have a positive attitude. Let me give you one other optimistic verse. And wallahi, this verse is really very profound, very mind-boggling if you think about it. It's a, a technical topic and I have to introduce it a little bit. Allah Azza wa talks about the laws of divorce. Maybe one khutbah will talk about the laws of divorce. And Allah mentions one of the rules of divorce. That after you give talaq, you say the divorce, when you, reconciliation fails, when the marriage process you think is over, you give the talaq, Allah makes a hard and fast rule. That rule is the husband and wife must live together in the same house for the period of the idda. For three months, husband and wife are going to live under the same roof. This is after the husband says divorce. This is after the first and second talaq. For three months, Allah says in the Quran, لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن ولا يخرجن. 
Do not expel them from their houses, neither should they leave. By the way, footnote here, notice. Allah says to the men, do not expel your wife from her house. لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن. Allah calls the the house the the wife's house, even though technically, generally speaking, who owns the house in most societies and cultures? Who paid for the house in most societies and cultures? I'm not talking about dual income. I'm talking about generally speaking, in most of human history, who purchased the house with their money? It was the husband. Correct? Yet Allah says, "Do not expel the wife from her house." لا تخرجوهن من بيوتهن. It is as if Allah is saying, house isn't just money. House isn't just legal ownership. You built a life together. That is her house as well. Don't destroy it so easily. Allah ascribes the house to her, even though ownership is His to indicate that there is something beyond the technicalities. The point being, Allah says, do not expel them from their houses, neither should they leave. Then, notice this verse. By the way, when is this verse applicable? At the very end of the end. When the marriage has one final thread, then it's gonna snap and the marriage is over. Literally one thread left. Talaq has been given. Three months are there. Then, what does Allah say? Listen to this, brothers and sisters, and memorize this verse. لا تدري لعل الله يحدث بعد ذلك أمرا سبحان الله سبحان الله الله says how do you know لا تدري how do you know perhaps Allah عز وجل will bring about a new affair between the two of them a new manner that will bring them together لا تدري لعل الله يحدث بينهما أمرا perhaps Allah might bring the two of them back together again at the very end of the marriage, and Allah says, don't give up hope. Do not give up hope. You do not know. Perhaps Allah will bring them back together again. If this is a verse that is applicable when the talaq has been given and the three-month idda is in place and the wife is about to leave and Allah says, how do you know? Do you know the future? Can you control the hearts of men and women? Do you know ilm al-ghayb? You do not know. Allah, perhaps Allah will bring about a new reconciliation between them. If this is the optimism at the very end of the marriage then dear brother and sister inshallah your marriage is not that bad inshallah your marriage is not at that stage if we're supposed to be optimistic at that stage then how about when marriages have their ups and downs arguments and love this is the reality of marriage when that is the case then we approach with a positive attitude we think the best thoughts and we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and inshallah as I said in the future we'll be giving more specific uh, mechanisms and advice about how we can preserve and protect our marriages. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran and may He make us of those who is verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness you as well ask Him for His the Ghafoor and the Rahman. Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, the one and the unique. He it is that we worship and it is his blessings that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed and he answers the call of the weak. Dear Muslims, the reality of marriage is that every single marriage has its ups and its downs, its good and its bad, its arguments and its peace, its love and yes, even its hate. This is the reality of marriage. And if Allah Azza wa Jal had wanted to create a marriage that has no negativity, no fighting, no anger, no bickering, He would have done so in the marriage of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and our mother Khadija and our mother Aisha. He would have done that. But we learn from the seerah. We learn from the books of hadith. Frankly, we learn from the Quran. What is Surah Taghab and Surah Talaq? Go read it. We learn from the Quran that even our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and our mothers, there was some back and forth. Now I want to ask you why? Why? If Allah had wanted to, He could have made our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's marriage foolproof, watertight, not a single argument, not a single issue. Of course He could have. But then if He did so, where would be the role model? How could we relate? How could we learn anything? If our Prophet Sallallahu became an angel, if our Prophet and our mothers became angelic, where is the role model for us? So Allah Azza wa Jal demonstrated that even the best marriage, even the most perfect marriage, you're going to have some bickerings and that's normal. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong. It is human nature. 
And many are the episodes of the seerah that demonstrate this. But to give you one simple example, which also has an element of humor to it that inshallah we can all benefit from. It is reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. It is reported in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad that once in the early days of Medina. So this is when the Prophet and Aisha were you know, newlyweds, right? So relatively early in the seerah. Uh, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq came to visit his daughter Aisha. And as he was standing outside the door, he heard Aisha's voice radiallahu anha raising high and rebuking the Prophet sallallahu for something, getting angry at something. He heard his daughter's voice in a loud manner, argumentative, speaking against something. We don't know the details, we don't need to know. But, you know, happens between husband and wife. He knocked on the door and the Prophet allowed him in and after saying salam he immediately rushed to his daughter Aisha this is his daughter and he says Ya binta Ummi Ruman O daughter of Ummi Ruman how dare you raise your voice against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the way when the father is angry he calls the children the mother's children and when the mother is angry he calls the children the father's children Tumare baita hai Abu Bakr says, Ya binta Ummi Ruman, O daughter of Ummi Ruman, and Aisha is binta Abi Bakr. But now he's not happy at Aisha. So he says, This is from your mother. This is not from my side. So he says, O binta Ummi Ruman, how dare you raise your voice against the voice of the Prophet? Subhanallah, we as husbands, do you not think if the Prophet wanted to, he could have silenced? Do you not think if Allah had wanted, he would have revealed to the wise of the Prophet, do not raise your voices? But that would be unreal. It would be unrealistic. It would be ungentlemanly. Our Prophet is sitting quiet and Aisha is getting irritated for a natural reason. It's human nature. Nothing wrong with it. She's asking or whatever it might be. We don't know the details. But Abu Bakr as a man cannot bear to see anybody raise his voice against the voice of the Prophet ﷺ. What is allowed for the women folk? It is not allowed for the men folk. No men would dare raise their voices. But this is our mother. This is the wife of the Prophet ﷺ. And she is saying what she is saying. And so in his anger, Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, he kind of lost his temper and it is as if perhaps he raised his hand maybe to you know discipline and again in that culture the father would discipline the daughter and the husband what this is the way it was so he raised his hand subhanallah we learn in the hadith as soon as he raised his hand the prophet stood up and came between abu bakr and aisha subhanallah you're not going to hit my wife subhanallah he came between Abu Bakr and aisha radiallahu anha to protect aisha right after aisha was rebuking him Think about this scene. Now the hand is raised, the process is there, what's going to happen? Obviously Abu Bakr's hand goes down, he feels embarrassed, he excuses himself, and he walks away to calm down. And the Prophet now turns to Aisha. And notice here, he's breaking the ice. He's now diffusing the tension. After all of this anger that has happened, he's diffusing the tension. This is the akhlaq of the Prophet He says, don't you see how I defended you against that man? Don't you see how I defended you against that man? Meaning after all that you've done, I'm still going to defend you. And they began talking back and forth until Abu Bakr al-Siddiq calmed down. He came back again. He knocked on the door. He entered in and the two of them were laughing and smiling. Tadahaka. They were laughing and smiling. Back to normal. And then he says, apologizing, Ya Rasulallah, Ya Rasulallah, allow me to enter into your times of peace as I entered in during your times of war together. Subhanallah. Allow me to now participate during your times of peace. Fi silmikuma. As I participated when the two of you were battling one another. So our Prophet smiled and said, Yes, indeed, we'll let you come in. Yes, indeed, we'll let you come in. This was his excuse and apology. My point being, dear brothers and sisters, in these anecdotes, in these incidents, this is what the humanity of our Prophet is. This is where we learn role models. Yes, every once in a while, a husband and wife might get irritated, might raise their voice. It is the reality of being human. But the goal is not that you have a marriage in which there's no fighting no raising of the voice, no anger. No, that's impossible. The goal is that that is the exception and the rule is that they're laughing together. The rule is that they're protecting one another as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did and that is insha'Allah Ta'ala the goal that all of us can strive for. It is insha'Allah something we'll be talking about in the future khutbas as well. Dear Muslims, the norm and the goal is that your marriage brings more sakina and more rahmah and yes, there's gonna be some tension, there's gonna be some downs, it is what it is. 
Our Prophet ﷺ had an entire month where he slept in the masjid. We know this because of marital tensions. That is the reality of life. But in all of his years of marriage, that only happened once. Only happened once. So yes, sometimes the situation becomes tough. But the goal, the goal is that the positives far outweigh the negatives. And the goal is that the love and the mercy is what it should be. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of our marriages like this. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la tadna'a fi hadhan yawmi dhamban illa ghafarta. Wa la hamman illa farrajta. Wa la daynan illa qadayta. Wa la maridan illa shafayta. Wa la asiran illa yassarta. Allahumma aghfir lana wa li ikhwanina ladhina sawquna bil iman. Wa la taj'a fi qulubina ghillan lilladhina amanu. Rabbana innaka raufur rahim. Allah اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بسوء فاشغله من نفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله العظيم يذكركم واشكر يزيد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة Please fill in all the gaps. There are people outside, inshallah. You can have the children come to the front, right? You want to get the children? I think it's okay if you're doing it, yeah. Any, any of the small children, you can come in the front row if you want. You can come in the front row. Any in the small children, we can just come here. That's fine, yeah, bismillah. It's better than them praying outside, right? What can we do? Yes, if the adults want to pray, no problem. Bismillah. Bismillah. Give me a call. Take a call for this one. Yeah, love Bismillah. Give me the call. Give me the call. Bismillah. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلا قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استو اعتدلوا الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والتين والزيتون وطور سنين وهذا البلد الأمين لقد خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم ثم رددناه أسفل سافلين إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فلهم أجر غير ممنون فما يكذبك بعد بالدين أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين الله أكبر
سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إنا أعطيناك الكوثر فصل لربك وانحر إن شانئك هو الأبتر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. On your way out, please donate for Masjid Operation, $20 at least. It will help us, uh, in, inshallah. Uh, I wanted to give you one more update on our Farmersville Cemetery. As you know, it is a 10 Masajid joint project. And alhamdulillah, in the month of Ramadan, we did a fundraise. We had a $250,000 of our portion that we were supposed to pay. And out of that, right after Ramadan, we paid already $210,000. About 40000 were left. Alhamdulillah, with your uh, help and Allah's help, you know, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, we were able to give them another $100,000. Out of that, 40000 is our final version we paid. We also picked up the other masajid that is coming a little bit short. So, inshallah, the rest 60000 will go toward INT's uh, portion of it, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.